Science in pajamas. Science in pajamas. All right, today we're going to talk about something called dichotomous keys. So the word dichotomous actually kind of means like two choices. So what this is, it's a way to help us identify something, whether it's a type of tree, a type of bird, types of shells, you can even use it to, you know, types of pins if you wanted to. But it's a way to identify something using a two choice method. So I have one up here. A lot of times they might be written as yes or no, or they might be written like this. Regardless, there's always two choices. So what we would say is, these are the birds I'm trying to identify. Now I put the names up there, pretend like they're not. So actually, I'm just going to go ahead and take those out. I'll show you how it is that we identify them. All right. So let's start with this guy. There's my purple. There's my purple. All right. So this guy. Beak long and slender, or is the beak stout and heavy? Well, it's long, but it's not really slender. So I'm going to say it's more on the heavy side. That means I'm going to go to question two. Is the bottom of the lower beak flat and straight or is it curved? Well, if you look at the bottom of the lower, it looks pretty flat. So I'm going to say that guy's probably Geospiza. All right, so now let's go to this guy. Beak long and slender? Not really. Beak stout and heavy? Definitely stout. All right, so I'm going to go to question two. Bottom of lower beak is flat and straight? Nope. Notice how it's curved. So if it's curved, go to question three. Lower edge of upper beak has a distinct bend. Well, it looks like the bottom part of the upper beak is more straight, so not really a bend. Lower edge of upper beak is flat. Flatty spizza. Beak is long and slender. Yeah, it's kind of long relative to its head size, and it's definitely slender, so that's probably Certhidea. Certhidea. All right, this guy. Beak is long and slender. No. Beak is stout and heavy. Definitely more on the stout side. So go to question two. Bottom of lower beak is flat and straight. No, that's this guy. Bottom of lower beak is curved. Yeah, see, got that nice little curve down there. Lower edge of upper beak has distinct length. bend. Yep, it's bending right there. So this would be MR Pupus. So all we do is we look at the two options and essentially decide yes or no. We can even reword this to be yes or no questions. Is the beak long and slender? Yes, it's Certhidae. No, go to question two. Is the bottom of the lower beak flat and straight? Yes, Geospiza. No, go to question three. Lower edge of upper beak has a distinct bend? Yes, it's that guy. Or if it doesn't, it's that guy. So this is just a way for us to kind of look at something, look at choices, and try and figure out what exactly something is. So I got some more examples up here. Give me a moment. So again, it's that idea of using different choices to try and figure out what an organism is. Here's a good one. Try to pull that up so it's readable. Okay, let's see. Not those, not those, not those, not those. Uh, 
Kind of shows you another example. So organism has a backbone. Go to question two. If it doesn't have a backbone, you can go to question five. Okay, so let's say it does. Does the organism have wings? If yes, go to question six. If it doesn't, go to question three. Question three. Organism has legs. If yes, go to question four. If no, go to question or it must be a snake. Because to get to that point, we had to realize it has a back backbone. And it does not have wings, and now we know it does not have legs. So that helps us to narrow it down. So these are just some examples of what dichotomous keys are. Again, it's this way of using essentially yes and no questions. So you really only want two choices. It could be yes or no, or it can be long and slender versus stout and heavy. But you can have two options, and either it's going to tell you where to go, which which is the next question you should jump to, or it's going to tell you what the answer is. So it's kind of like those choose your adventure books. Uh, you're in the middle of a forest. You see a light. If you choose to go towards the light, go to page 37. If you choose to go away from the light, go to page 53. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. It's just a way to help us look at characteristics and then figure out what the organism is based on those characteristics. So we'll do some practice of this in class, but I hope this at least helps kind of break it down a little bit more. Um, stay safe, stay healthy. If you have questions, hit me up in our Google Classroom or through email. But in the meantime, 